Are you tired of playing vanilla Minecraft? Want to add some new gameplay mechanics and customs to your world? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install and use resource packs as well as data packs to enhance your Minecraft world. My name is MonPJC and welcome to my Getting Started with Modded Minecraft series. So we want to do a little bit with um, some textures and some resource packs. Well, that's what we're going to start with. So we are going to go to a website called Vanilla Tweaks. And there's probably loads of you who potentially use this already. So this is a fantastic little website that was started quite a while ago. Uh, 1.11 they started on, so that's been quite going around for quite a while. And um, got kicked off by someone called Exuma. And he's handed this over to loads of other people to do different bits and pieces now. And they do a lot of the work on this website. Very nice looking website, by the way. So resource packs and data packs and crafting tweaks are the things that we're going to be looking at. So these data packs basically get broken down into three different things. The names tend to be interchangeable, resource packs, data packs. We're going to explain a little bit more exactly which each one of these actually is. So starting with resource packs. <clears throat> um, ignore the warning up here, we're using 1.19. So the idea of a resource pack is that it basically allows you to change the textures of things as they appear in the game. So let's give you some examples. So here we can see we can get black never bricks and you can sort of change the color of them. You can make uh, cherries on the top there. And uh, this is one of my favorites, you can probably see there in the top right, is you can actually have different color stems for um, either the pumpkins or the melons. And the way in which you use this data pack is you just basically click on the different blocks and sometimes you get a little animation here, different breakdown, different ways stuff gets broken. A little animation, see it breaks from the bottom and breaks. And you go through and you check the different things that you want. So let's say we want black and never bricks, some cherries, different stems. Uh, I prefer them when they're bundled. Leave them. Uh, we can take the saturation out there. We can take the saturation out of the oak. We can have some horizontal nuggets. Now, one thing I will do here is if oh, it does actually let me pick both. I didn't think it would. We can have softer wool, brown leather, and change the iron golem. Uh, we can have colourful enchanting things there. Uh, we can have unique dyes. As you can see, as I add these, they all get added on this list here. And you can technically change the priority of which one has uh, what animate or what pro property, which overrides which. Ashley's campfires, I think, look quite nice. Pink tip. Uh, updates the bed icons. Let's have a look what else we've got. Polished stones to bricks, mm, maybe not. Um, so there's some sort of like texture things there. Then we, as you can see, there's loads. So we've then got uh, terrain. So we can actually change it so that our coarse dirt has no pebbles or pebbleless dirt. So there are different things that you can actually do as well. There's lower sides. So it allows you to let the grass come right down the right hand side or just have a little bit at the edge there. Variations is quite nice because variations allow you to have more of a, a pattern across there. So it's not continuous all the time. It does vary across the pattern. So they're, they're quite nice to actually have. Connected textures can be quite good as well. So here you can see with the bookshelves, the edges disappear. And then some of the other little things, I mean, you can see there's loads in just the resource pack. We can have peace and quiet. So you can actually choose to have quieter ghasts, for example, or different creatures, make them all quieter. Uh, there's some utilities in here as well. So you can actually get you know, infested stones to be highlighted. Um, you can actually have redstone with numbers on it, which is uh, one of my favorites. You can have sticky pistons, which are sticky on the side, directional hoppers. They're actually really useful things like that when you're actually doing your builds and things. Um, unobstructive means you can do things like remove the rain, 
pumpkins, layers, when you're playing, you've got a pumpkin on. Um, 3D, be careful with the 3D. Um, it's very easy to go in here and click everything. Um, depends how well your computer can handle the 3D rendering. I quite often found if I put 3D vines on and then I go into a jungle, my computer will start lagging and stuff like that. HUD, you can have things like rainbow pin counters and all sorts of things. So there's a whole ton of stuff in here. Dark UIs, optional backgrounds in menus. Um, what else have we got? Uh, panoramas, retro things, you can add those colors back in. Um, and there's also some fun stuff in here. So if, you, if you're a big fan of Exuma, you can have a turtle with his head on it. Or you can have, where's the, oh yeah, Il Mango Golden Apples. It's always one of my favorites as well. So once you've actually gone through and selected all of the different things that you want, what you can actually do then is click on the whole download button here. And um, I'll actually click that little button there because it stops you going to the advert. Um, click direct download and your little zip file gets downloaded onto your computer. So go ahead and do that. That's, that's your resource pack. Data packs. Let's have a look and see what's in the data pack. Data packs are slightly different because they tend to be more functional features that are running in the game. So things like graves. So if you die, it creates a grave where you can go and get your bits back. Multiplayer sleep. This is for when you're on a server. It should be very useful. Only one person has to sleep and then, you know, uh, the, the daytime disappears. Um, so that's really good. You can get the, the armor stand thing, which is what you've seen people like Cleo do on Hermitcraft, where they all stand in different shapes and types, shapes and things. There are some extra things like wrenches you can use for turning things. You can get more mob heads, for example. There's some methods of you, uh, teleportation, custom villager shops, and there's some Hermitcraft things that have got added on as well. Again, what you do is you go in here and you choose the things that you want to actually have. So these tend to be more functional sort of add-on. They're sort of a bit programmy type, like, um, but they change the way the game um, reacts rather than the way the game looks. So sort of like change the rules. Once again, hit the download button. Your data pack gets downloaded over there. Um, and I'll go through the instructions to explain to you how to do this in a minute. How to install them. And the next, the last one is crafting tweaks. So crafting tweaks basically changes the recipes in the game. So for example, um, you could do things like back to blocks. So if you've got a load of steps, you can convert them back into uh, blocks again. Whereas you can't normally do that in a normal game. There's little things like being able to burn rotten flesh and turn it into leather. Um, you can have universal dyeing on uh, the uh, different stones and materials and things. More blocks. So this is one where normally you'd only get a few uh, trapdoors. Uh, but in here you can actually choose to actually get 12 of them or you can get more stairs. They tend to be things I tend to add because they're just, you know, just waste a lot of resources. Um, something else you can do as well, you can make craftable golden uh, enchanted apples again, craftable name tags, and then there's an unpack option, which is things like wool can be turned into string, or you can take uh, Navarak apart. And again, you just hit the whole download button, direct download, or I do direct download, and you end up with these three lots of different files down here that I've got now what you'll actually see is on the name of each of them, you've got C for crafting, D for data pack, and R for resource pack. So they're your three different packs. Now, there is a set, a whole page of instructions on how to actually install these things as well, which annoying, there we go, install process. Will actually take you through how to go about doing this. Follow these instructions, they are absolutely perfect. They work every time. Resource packs, effectively, you click on your options button, go to the resource packs folder button there, go into here and 
vanilla Minecraft will open up the resource pack folder and there you are, there's your folder. You just drag and drop your resource pack or file into that folder with the R on it. That's the one with the R. Now for data packs and crafting, slightly different because uh, they're saved in a different place on the game. So if, if you're playing in single player, and later on we'll explain how to do this when you're doing things like playing on server um, in another video. So you go to single player, click on your world, do edit, and then you can do open world folder. And what this will do is it open the folder on your computer where it shows where your game is actually saved. And you will see a folder in there called data packs. Go into that folder, and copy into that folder the two other zip files. So you've got the, the crafting file and the data pack file. Now, only for the data pack, this is, you click on it and you click extract all. And what that will do is it will create a folder with all those files in it. Uh, and then that's what you can that then what you'll actually have is a load more zip files that are all in there because you see that the data pack actually co actually has a name on the end of it called unzip me so you can unlock them and then all those are in there and your other vanilla tweaks uh, crafting folder will be in there if you've already done that and your world's running okay um, you can come out of Minecraft go back into it you might have to type this command uh, which is reload to make it forced to reload all the packs generally speaking i normally come out of playing the game go back in after i've done this and they all work perfectly right so i'm going to do that i'm going to go through and make a few selections of my own and i'm going to copy them over into my machine and let's have a look see if we can actually see them when we load the game up so i've now made those changes and uh, as per those instructions i'm going to go back into my game i did do a backup just before I do this. Uh, let's go back in here and let's see if we can see some of those changes. Yep, so I'm, I'm still here, I'm in the game. That's looking good. And something I'm going to do, and this is why I use like creative in the game occasionally, because when you want to be doing things, you will be modifying and testing things. You want to, I mean, yes, this is going to be my let's play world and I will be doing stuff in here as well. Uh, we can see the doors look bit more 3D than they were before. It might have been that. I did actually have a texture pack on. I didn't even realise. Um, so I'm going to switch to creative mode because it means all the mobs aren't going to try and kill me. And what it means I can do is I can actually have a look around. We can see grass looks all right. We can see the birchwood trees have now got different textures. They've got a variation in them. The grass will actually have variations in it as well. Where's the moon and the sun? The moon, the sun is a, a square shaped one, which I picked, which is good. He's walking around with bits of earth. He's not supposed to do that. I think I turn that off. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see if we can do some of the crafting things that we would modify. So for example, um let's go for some rotten leather and we've got a piece of coal right so let's just grab a bit of coal and a bit like that and let's just see if the crafting recipe now works you can see Lever now comes up, and you can see it now will put rotten flesh in there. So if I now put the coal in there, that will now create lever. And you can see the lever is actually a different colour as well. So I can see my textures and different bits and pieces are all working. Okay, I'm not actually going to do it because it's going to update my advancements. So what I'm going to do is just throw those away. Um, something else I should be able to do as well. It's got me log thing there now. Uh, if I go in here. I'm going to create those. It's a crafting table. What I want to do is if I do something like that, you can now see I can make eight stairs rather than just a few stairs. 
or I can make 12 spruce trapdoors instead of what I would have been able to do before. So there we go. So that looks like it's all working beautifully. That means I can carry on now. Uh, let's get myself back into survival. And oh yeah, there was one other thing I was going to show you. If I press the L button, where you get your achievements and advancements, there's your normal achievements and advancements. If you now look here, you get this tab called Vanilla Tweaks. And it will actually tell you which ones of these, uh, these extra data packs are actually added. So you can see I've got the durability ping, I've got dragon drops, anti enderman grief, armor stands, double shelters, player grave, and bat membranes. And the other thing I just noticed on here on the screen as well, um, you can sort of see down the bottom here, I've got a rainbow color now on my uh, XP bar. And if I press the tab button, of course, I don't get anything on tab because I'm a single player. But I would actually have the multi bar color ping button as well there. Well, I hope that gives you a good flavor to start experimenting with resource packs and data packs. Vanilla Tweaks is not the only example. There's lots more resource and texture packs out there. However, you now have the basics on how to actually install of them. And I'd love to actually hear what ones you actually find that you actually like. In my next video, I'm going to show you how you can create and modify uh, texture packs and day packs. And as part of that, I'm going to be doing a custom armor skin that I'm going to be wearing myself. And if you want to see more videos like this, and if you want to see my playthrough of my modded Minecraft, and then there's a video coming out for that very soon as well, which will be planned. Thanks very much for watching and see you all again next time. Thanks then. Bye.